And so what strategies have we used uh, to target BRAF mutations in lung cancer? So I will admit we've borrowed most of our strategies from melanoma. We've essentially repurposed melanoma's therapeutic strategies. And for the most part, the focus has really been on V600 BRAF mutations or class one BRAF mutations. And the first strategy that was explored in melanoma and in the context of non-small cell lung cancer was blocking this atypical or abnormal V600 protein that signals as a monomer or single protein instead of that dimer complex. So these are selective medicines that are made to block that single BRAF protein. Um, the first one I wanted to discuss is called dabrafenib. This is actually approved for BRAF V600E mutant non-small cell lung cancer. And in phase two studies, um, it demonstrated an objective response rate of around 30%, disease control in about 60% of tumors, and a median progression-free survival of about five to six months. And what that means is that from the time you started the treatment to the time the cancer progressed, on average, was about five to six months. And so if we look at the next slide, there's another kind of BRAF monomer inhibitor that has been kind of selectively developed to block the V600 uh, protein. And that's called vemurafenib. This is also approved for melanoma. This trial design I think is interesting because it's a little bit different here. Whereas the prior trial design I talked about looks specifically at V600E, this looked at all kind of V600E and non-V600 BRAF mutants and kind of explored efficacy in this context. Similar to what we saw with the brafenib, um, the objective response rate was around 45% in V600, and the median progression-free survival was around five to six months. Interestingly, however, if you look at the green bars, these are patients with non-V600 eBRAF mutations. The objective response here was 0%, with, a, with just blocking the BRAF protein with these selective inhibitors. Next slide. But what we learned from melanoma and kind of what we've learned from non-small cell lung cancer is that 30 to 40 percent is great, but it isn't quite kind of top line. What we expect from our really efficacious targeted therapies like out targeted therapies and EGFR targeted therapies where we see 60 to 70 percent response rates and which led people to kind of explore why cancers were becoming resistant to BRAF inhibition alone. And it turned out that the cancers were reactivating kind of MEK and ERK downstream, uh, kind of inviting the question, what if we did what we call vertical block? Blockade. We block BRAF and we block MEK, which is the protein directly downstream of BRAF. And so these are the combinations that are actually currently approved in non-small cell lung cancer with BRAF V600 E mutations. This is that same study we looked at first that was just looking at the brafenib, the BRAF inhibitor in V600 E uh, non-small cell lung cancer with V600 E mutations. Here they've added a MEK inhibitor called trametinib, and we see a doubling of the response rate from around 30% to 60%. The disease control rate, so how many tumors are at least stable, goes up from about 60% to about 80%, and the median progression-free survival increases from about six to nine months. Here it's a little confusing because they looked first in patients who, they looked simultaneously in patients who had never received treatment and some who had received chemotherapy. And so that's where kind of their different uh, numbers reported there. But nonetheless, this demonstrates that when we do a combination therapy, we get better outcomes. And so this really distinguishes BRAF from our other targeted therapies where we give a single pill blocking kind of a single protein. Here we're blocking uh, two key proteins in this MAPK signaling cascade. Next slide. And so what, what, what do we, I guess, what do we lose or what do we know what we gain from efficacy, but what might we lose, lose in terms of toxicity from combining a MAC and a BRAF inhibitor compared to if we did a BRAF inhibitor alone? So these drugs, I will admit, are a bit tougher to tolerate than our kind of osimertinib or tegriso or lectinib and medications like that. There are certain class effects, one of which is pyrexia or fevers, and these can be pretty challenging for patients. They're not associated with infections, and um, they do respond to Tylenol and stopping the drug and reducing the BRAF inhibitor specifically. Other key side effects are uh, gastrointestinal, such as nausea, diarrhea, and vomiting. The rate of these or the frequency of these does increase a little bit when you add the BRAF the MEK inhibitor to the BRAF backbone. We also see edema or swelling in the legs. And interestingly, if you do kind of BRAF blockade alone, um, the KRAS is actually imp important for skin cancers. And so you get this kind of interesting circuit where people's skin cancers actually grew on when, when you block BRAF alone. And so when you block MEK, there's actually a reduction in kind of KRAS driven skin cancers from about 12% to 4%. So that, that might minimize that particular type of toxicity. 
in general, as mentioned, these drugs can be a bit harder to tolerate. And so one in 10 patients or a little bit above that, 12% discontinued therapy in this study and 60% required a dose interruption and one in three patients required a dose reduction. In my clinical practice, I tend to dose reduce the BRAF inhibitor before the MEK inhibitor.